my boy, a friendly local otaku. Hey guys, it's your friendly local otaku. Coming back at you with the truth. As you could have probably guessed already, this is going to be one of your typical top 10 most best greatest anime movie of all time. Ah, oh, yeah, fuck yeah. Oh. These are just kind of the biggest anime movies or recently that really kind of just impact me in some way or just in like enjoyment level. Blah 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 blah. You know, kind of the order at the moment in my life that like kind of just. I love the most and I'll kind of like I'm gonna just give a summary of what they are and you know what I find the most interesting about them and stuff yada yada etc etc so without further ado let's go on with honorable mentions ha <laughs> ha you gotta see you gotta I can't show you the list you know wouldn't make the video fun but uh we got a fucking, could have started off the, li the honorable mentions list with a fucking a G G Studio Ghibli f film. Porco Rosso. And yeah, I fucking, I fucking love that film, man. It really, really was fucking, love the adventure. Just love like, just the characters. It felt really, just what we don't really have nowadays, man. Just like kind of risks and just kind of go show you that like, Hayao Mizugaki was is kind of like, one in a lifetime, you know, fucking directors, man. Really just, you know, kind of, you know, I know we have Miss, Miss Kai Shinkai and stuff like that in our time, but, you know, he really is, you know, unique. And I really do appreciate it, man. Speaking of Miss Kai Shinkai, our next in our honorable mention, <gasps> you're, you're putting it on our mentions? Yeah, I really fucking love, you know, your name, but, you know, your name is really pretty and really beautiful and other than that and I really love the story you know mystery drama you know coming of age story but overall you know I like I said every film in this every mention on this list I love but you know it's out of all the out of the top 10 and out recently like yeah it just made men's top uh, honorable mention you know and it's yeah I feel like it's a little bit overhyped Compared to the other ones. Next honorable mention. I got Summer Wars. Madhouse. This was when Madhouse was a little bit on the downward side. But you know. They were still pumping out good movies you know. And Summer Wars was one of them. I really enjoyed the art style of this movie. Uh, really was uh, something. Uh, Summer Wars. Uh, I really could connect with the character you know. Family is something I never really connected with and you know it's something I connected with the main character in the movie and that's is why it's like really I connected with the movie that's something I really uh, connected emotionally and that's why I, I put it in the armor mentions you know art style connected to the main main character the story was fun connected many elements with the movie and I really enjoyed it like I said all movies love them <laughs> don't take offense and now Let's get on to the meat and bones. Top tens. Number ten. And this is gonna be. The King's Avatar. Yes, and I can su highly suggest this movie. Yes, this movie is from motherfucking China. But fuck it, anime is basically animation. So fuck you casuals and elitists that are fucking crying right now that I use the word anime for animation. But yeah, The King's Avatar, back to the point. The King's Avatar is fucking, uses CGI right and it uses it beautifully. Especially movie level quality like I've never seen before. 
Or maybe I have seen it before, but they use it so damn well throughout the movie. The fucking main character is on point like he always is. Fucking, it's like a prequel to like the mid series, so you don't have to watch the actual series. You could actually watch the movie first if you want to. It's actually, I would recommend the movie first so you could get into the series. And yeah, yeah, it's, it's really good. If you if you have your doubts about CGI like I did, China is leading the fucking whooping anything Japan's ass overall. I think this movie looks a lot better than fucking say anything fucking Japan's doing CGI wise. <coughs> Demon Slayer. Anyways, next on the list, number nine. Yeah, I held up number three. What are you gonna fucking do from your fucking keyboards, bitches? Anyways, number nine, Mind Games. Oh, ho, ho. I've talked about this on my channel, man. Like, you know, kind of just briefly, but Mind Games. Oh, mind Games, yeah. It's it's basically LSD on drug. Like, LSD, the the anime. It's fucking... It's just... They combine... So, the guy, the, the director, just... He's known to just, just have no style whatsoever. And it's, it's great, man. You just... You're just like consistently just being blown away like how many styles you can mix so well. And this just like this story is just kind of always have you just tripping balls. See what I did there? <laughs> Anyways, go check out that. And uh, yeah, it's it's also just one more thing before we move on to the next one. Uh, the movie was released in 2018 in the US, but the movie didn't actually come out until 2003. Which is pretty insane, man. It just shows you that, like, in some ways we regressed, man. Number eight. Sword of the Stranger. Yeah, Sword of the Stranger, man. This was one of those early movies I watched when I was barely getting into, like, you know, all that Japanese culture, you know, fucking getting into anime, you know, you know. Japanese side of animation <laughs> uh, And yeah, Sword of Stranger is fucking just the fights this it's probably the best like swords swords ah ah sword fight scenes like animated uh, I've seen in like in Ever like so far I think or at least it's up there. I think it's still better than <coughs> Demon Slayer <laughs> Shots fired, huh? Anyways, yeah Best sword scene fights, the story, you know, it's an action adventure. Fucking, you love the main characters, you're rooting for them the whole time. Fucking builds up to a really suspenseful ending, and yeah. You're just, uh, it's a really huge build up to the end, and I really enjoy it. Alright, let's move on to the next one. k -On, the movie. So, disclaimer for this one. Uh, this one, you kind of have to watch two seasons of, uh, of the actual, like, you know, series to actually, you know, watch the movie. So just letting you know right there before you get in want to watch this movie. But yeah, I really enjoy this movie. I've seen it like four times and I just can't get enough of my girls, man. You know, K-On! is just a special series in my heart and this movie was done justice. Because this movie was like kind of like a conclusion to the series. That's why I said you got to watch it. Because not just cause to know the characters, but also it's a conclusion to the series. Because the series kind of leaves it kind of like, eh, you know, it's, the ending was kind of like lacks that luster. And then the movie kind of just cleans it up and gives the series a proper send off. So, yeah, that's what I love about it. It gives it a proper send off. The animation was obviously movie quality. So, it was, it's by Kyoto Animation. Oh, yeah. You know, all the girls are, you know, just being like themselves, you know. The movie is just basically a perfect like send off. Anyways, talking about perfect send off, we're gonna move on to number six. Speaking of which, uh, when the year that came out, fucking, what, what, what your name, what was that year, there was another movie that came out that was kind of, you know, that was overshadowed by it, and this is our uh, entry into number six, A Silent Voice, and my boy, 
My, my, my gosh. This movie is fucking fantastic, man. It's by Kyoto Animations. Woo! That's another one in the books right there. But uh, yeah, it's not a voice. It's just a story about, you know, this guy that bullies a girl when he was younger and like he regrets it to the point where he's like committing, he's about to like kill himself and like it's just a redemption story and like, ooh, yeah, it's really good, really beautiful. Uh, it's just, you need to go watch it. That's one of those you need to go watch, make you cry, make you kind of make you think about your life, etc., etc. Let's move on to number five because, you know, kind of wanting this to cry now myself. Number Cinco. Kira, ooh, I got my friend, like he watched it before me and he told me like, it's a classic for a reason. So I was like, the, the, like once he told me, I was like, all right, I'm gonna watch it, you know. In the first two minutes of watching it, I had tears running down my eyes. Not because I was like, in like, you know, obviously there was emotion, but I was just like, holy shit, man. This is a classic, like, it's like almost like you immediately can feel it in your soul that this is something special if you're being in like, if you watched a lot of animations throughout, you know, your course, anime, animations, etc. But yeah, it's just the animation. The, so many productions worked on this fucking thing, man. It's insane. This thing like <laughs> lost money. Oh, why do so many like things that are so influential? This Akira shaped anime. This thing was like the pinnacle. This this films is a reference inspired so many people inspired so many works and it's just you Akira is a staple of why people should experiment even if it's a failure it could lead to so many other things this is why I, I just hate how like we're in a state of like stagnant nowadays Akira is an example of why we should still push forward like money like you know risks over you know profit you know anyways Let's move on to the next one. And number four. Number four is Perfect Blue. And you'll be seeing a pattern now. Sakashi Kon, oh, you know, I was just talking about, you know, him in my last videos. He's my favorite director of all time, man. And you'll be seeing a pattern for the next few entries. <coughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah, and Perfect Blue, man. That, that, there's so many consciousness levels, like, playing in that movie, man. Like, I literally, like for the main character, because I like to put myself in the main character, didn't know what the fuck was going on in real life in that movie. Like I was like, what's going on? What is real? <laughs> like seriously, like in a good way. Like it's you still invested in the movie throughout the whole thing. You just don't know what's going on. It's one of those movies, you know. <laughs> but that's Sakashi, uh, Sakashi Kon's style. He that's what he likes to do. He's a uh, that's his thing. Anyways, let's move on to number three. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Hitomi, I know Hitomi, I like this. Hey, 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 hey,
約束した場所で行けば二度と戻ってこられません毎日あの人を好きになってくんだもの For this freaking freaking movie, man. I love it, man, so much. This fucking movie is about like a fucking, you know, woman. It's like, you know, this guy, like, you know, that kind of like gives her a key to, like, you know, apparently, like, you know, something pretty important. And, you know, she fucking just, you know, runs with tracing him around because apparently, like, she loves him. And, you know, that's kind of just the premise of the whole movie, you know? It's kind of simple, but, you know. It's, it's pretty good. It's another、uh, Sakash, uh, Sakashi Kon movie. m i n e r o actress.、Uh, what I like about the movie, too, a lot is this, you just have the fucking, you know, the fucking guy giving her the interview when she's old, like just following her around in the story. And it's just funny seeing their interactions. Fucking go check that out. Millennium, millennium, millennium actress. And then we move on to number two. Kimura, you are Oi Tadanobu Asano. Red line, fucking red line, red line, baby. Hell yeah, fucking. Oh, yeah, talking about pushing the limits of animation. Red Line was fucking pushing, fucking like in my last video, really pushed the limits of Madhouse. Nearly bankrupt them. was like, But everyone agrees, it's like a beautiful movie. Fucking just, oh. Anyone that's just like, doesn't like dramas, doesn't like slices of life, etc., etc., et you need to watch this movie because it's just action packed. First 10 minutes, right off the start, you have this, like, just. Stupid action packed race. Go watch it if, like, if you're not interested in that boring shit whatever, for some reason. If you think that's boring, weirdos. And, anyways, red line. I remember、uh, me and my buddy were just like fucking, we were tripping on something, <coughs> mushrooms.、Uh, and yeah, it's fucking the animation just like really popped up, to, popped out of us. And man, it just shows us even how much more beautiful it was. and Yeah, Red Line is a movie everyone needs to go watch if they haven't gone and watched it, man. It's just something that was sadly a failure and needs to be watched more. It needs to be shown that even failures have successes like Akira and Red Line. And then we're gonna move on to our number one, my favorite my movie of all time at this moment, and in my opinion, just gotta throw that out there.
and that is Paprika. And of course, fucking 2006 Madhouse Sakashi Kon movie, and my god. You know, we always wondered, you know, scientists still don't know to this day why we have dreams, and that's like, this movie is just a perfect example. Like, you just, not only, you know, there was a process, it was before Inception, you know, brought on all that shit about, you know, incepting dreams and all that stuff, but, you know, the director himself was just like such a, was such in his prime, like, if you look at his, like, biography and, like, it all, like, his, like, his works, he was in his prime, and, like, this movie was, like, really just shaping, like, what he was gonna do, like, and, like, he was working on, and, like, that's why it's just a favorite, and, like, another thing, too, is personally to this movie, for me, like, I don't really have dreams, and I have friends that just, like, have dreams all the time, and I kind of envy that, and, like, Paprika, it's just, like, uh, just uh, just kind of wondering what I could have and you know, just wish uh, a dream machine, you know, per se. And I just obviously the movie itself is just fantastic and excellent and a masterpiece in my opinion. And honestly, is why I'm making this overall list in the first place and why you should go watch it. And anyways, and like I said before, all these fucking uh, movies on the entries are fantastic. Masterpiece, masterpieces in my eyes, but overall, that's just how I feel about them at this moment in my life and can be subject to change at any time in the future. Anyways, after all that big little mini rant, <clears throat> I got here the most important thing that there ever was in the universe, and I'm gonna share it with you guys. Wanna know what it is? Well, I just said I'm gonna share it with you guys. <clears throat> And it is... <laughs>